In the dream, I walk down the road with its impeccable side lawns. The breeze is pleasant and the sunlight warm on the skin. Birds sing the beautiful songs of their kind among themselves. Above me as the tree branches act like very tender fingers to hold them and the leaves caress their colorful feathers. From a distance, a heavier sound seems to approach. A sudden shadow begins to gradually take over the horizon and approach me. The birds, sensing the danger, fly away off the trees as the shade looms and they leave their joyful singing for survival panic. The lawn withers, as do the trees, as they are touched by this now increasingly monstrous sound materialized as a shadow. It is a rhythmic laser beam type of siren, a sort of pip, 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 that grows and grows as the sunlight is covered and extinguished under a shade that absorbs the dream. Wait, this is a dream? Oh, right, it is a dream. What is that sound? What? Oh, it sounds like the sound my alarm makes. It is the sound my alarm makes. And I wake up. On the table, the phone's alarm is ringing rhythmically, as rhythmically as the shade sounded in the dream. It was just the alarm, interrupting my beautiful dream. But before I woke up, my mind had to make sense of that new aspect that came out of nowhere unexpectedly. It couldn't have just let the sound appear without meaning and let it be. It could have placed a telephone ringing on the sidewalk as I passed, but the mind decided it would be a nightmare instead, with my beautiful dream being consumed by that rhythmic noise that was so unexpected and so unpleasant. Maybe because something in my mind knew that it was actually time to wake up. And that is rarely pleasant now, is it? Now, the sound of that alarm going off could not have been left by itself. The way our time-based linear minds work, we need things to be expected, predictable, to fit a purpose and a meaning. Now, you may ask, but is a nightmare of a laser-sounding shadow engulfing reality something that makes sense? Not in the regular program of reality, no. But the mind had no time to think, so to speak, on what to do with the sound within the story that was already going on, so it had to improvise. Nothing was found that could make sense, so what did the mind do? It panicked. But even the panic needs to make sense to our avid sense programmed minds. So it created a monstrous destruction of the beautiful dream as it gradually woke up because, since it couldn't fit that sound anywhere else in the narrative, it was processed as a threat. This is what our minds do when we get a realization from truth, that is, from beyond this false reality. Whatever realization it was, it immediately made no sense. So the mind has to find a way to process this new knowing within its own ongoing narrative. What is this knowing? It's the conclusion of a line of thinking. It's inspiration. It's God. Where did it come from? I read it in a book. I heard it somewhere. It's God. How can I know this? I thought it into existence. It's my imagination. It's God. Yes, the third guy is very repetitive. But anyway, take your pick. All three exemplified reasons are false. Yet they are preferred attempts by different minds to come up with not only explanations for a sudden, instantaneous realization that has no logical source, but also to fit them into a meaning. Let me say it straight bef if before I wasn't clear in my previous contemplations. There is no meaning to reality. There is no purpose to it. This is my view. Some of us can't even begin to imagine how many are here but are not from here, even though playing characters within the world, unaware of it most of their lives. However, when we know, when we receive the message, so to speak, then we always go through the attempts at assimilation, 
because our minds are unable to accept anything that is not the program of reality. If you see a light moving quickly in the sky, what is it? Aliens? Angels? Meteors? Take your pick, as it is all an attempt to fit the experience into a cohesive reality. Or, as Matt rightly says, a cohesive reality bubble. Nevertheless, this adaptation is absolutely expected, as we are programs that do what programs do. And what is that? Well, all programs do is what they are programmed to do. So the ineffable, the incomprehensible that lies beyond the programmed senses, including the mind, that sent that unexpected knowing, is expecting us to treat it with a false adaptation into our own story, our own narrative. It doesn't care because it knows that we have to do these things as stories, narratives, meanings are needs for us, programmed into our very artificial created construct. You see, our mental complexes, that is, our egos plus their attachments, including narratives, are AIs functioning in reality, our programs themselves. So they are limited to what they are programmed to do. However, some, I don't know how many, carry a piece of that true life that is not part of any program, that is not from here, but that is there and here nevertheless, fragmented as a schizoid is fragmented among several personalities. It acts like a sort of a player playing the AI it is attached to, when it becomes conscious of being there and no longer cares for the identification with that particular AI character. So a connection is established between a false AI and a true living being, all in the same place, so to speak. Yes, space is an illusion, it doesn't really exist, but our linear minds need to define placement to understand it. Now, obviously, some of you are going to ask, Hey, Armoon, then how the heck do you know that, eh? So you think you're better than us, eh? My answer to that is, no, 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 no. I don't know anything. I bear no knowledge on me. All I have is knowing, not a knowledge. All I do is allow myself to know beyond myself where that ineffable thing is. And yes, of course, none of what I say is true, just because I say it. No words can represent truth, just as truth speaks no words. All I can do to speak is to use metaphors, analogies, allegories, parables. Because I, myself, as myself in reality, that is my mental complex, am by nature unable to know myself what is beyond myself. I can only allow it to manifest its wordless, uncreated, unconceptualized meaning from where life and truth are, beyond the curtains of this programmed world. All that I, or any other individual, uh, truly interested in conveying that amazing knowing that found us, I repeat, that found us, not the other way around, all that we can do is put into words what you already know, not as the AI you, not as the mental complex of this reality, but as the shard of life beneath or beyond it. There is nothing new here, not on this channel, not on all the books and videos made in reality. There is also nothing true. The truth is already in you, that is where life is, that is where the meaning is, and never, ever in reality. What is it that Matt usually says to? Pay no attention to the screen? Yes, agreed, pay no attention to the screen. But be attentive to your own backyard, to your own house, to your own sphere of perception. It is not you that need to find anything, but it is you that need to be found in your own house. There is nothing that we need to do here or need to learn. You already have it. And if you are listening to this channel among so different a choice, 
you certainly do have it, whether you realize it or not. Connected to you, that life, that meaning beyond all this meaninglessness, that truth that shows you what you couldn't have known. That is meaning. The only meaning that is living and true. Because it isn't real. And you know, nothing else matters. Let's now go back and summarize. I stated that our mental complexes, again made up of the ego and the attachments and scripts or programs, are all AIs. That is why we are the Demiurge too. You see, metaphorically, I repeat metaphorically, the Demiurge is the operating system. In turn, the fallen Sophia, aka Gaia, is the computer and we are applications running in their interaction. The two shadows that I mentioned previously in other videos. The processes that regulate the applications, like setting and running limitations and controls, triggering responses and so on, those are metaphors for the archons that are basically at the automatic mind level of parasites. So, uh, once again, there is no meaning, except going beyond all the meaninglessness of reality to be found by a life that is incomprehensible to our minds, yet recognizable. However, we need meaning, so we fill in the gaps and blanks in the story, left by unexpected edits and instant realizations. I will leave a few links in the description that are worth watching with what was said here in mind, from this perspective. Do not consider that I necessarily agree with all the content in those videos. This is for you to consider yourselves by yourselves. So, one is about a health condition called Charles Bonnet syndrome, which is when people with serious eyesight impairment are unable to recognize actual defined forms in reality. So they continuously have their minds filling in the blanks of what their visual sense could not recognize and catalog with imaginary visions. Another is about experiments related to two different mind processes going on in our own mind processor, where one hemisphere of the brain will edit the input of the other to make up a cohesive continuous narrative very interesting. And the last one is pure entertainment, an illusionist show. Now the illusionist relies on our search for meaning to perform its tricks with speed and preventing our senses and processing capacity to realize what was actually seen and so we see what the illusionist provided as a narrative for our minds to interpret and not what was actually done in reality. In the same manner, we are illusionists in ourselves, preferring often a slate of hand to accepting the realization as it is. Yet, once we know that it is an illusionist trick to create a meaning, then we can admit that we perceived what we perceived was merely a trick, even though we were unable to determine how it was done. To create that meaning in the meaningless is expected of us, our minds being the constructs they are in that reality. As long as we are aware that that is what we are doing and are attentive not to fall again in the traps of meaning search among the scripts laid out for us, it is expected. Again, there is none, no meaning here. Go back home, that is, back to your innermost selves, where life is connected to and realize that the treasure is where it has always been from the start, timelessly, beyond and before anything that happened or any story that we told ourselves, which could only, at best, have been a metaphor to convey digestible meaning to our artificially intelligent minds. The living self, that needs no meaning, because it is already and has always been since before the befores and this is the only true meaning